Who's voting for Donald Trump? I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is such a great song. I guess it's from the olden days by the OJs. We're going to talk about money today. Money, money, money. All right. Can't do the intro music too much. I'm Shauna Yao, CEO and business and personal success strategist at TotalGenius.net, where I help you discover your genius, which is a combination of your expertise and life experience, and build it into a profit-generating business, which is based on your purpose. And today, I'm going to talk about, well, that subject, about uh, making money and why so many people, maybe you, are not making what you feel like you should be making. Uh, and, and, or, uh, or I guess, and not getting clients. And so I'm going to uncover, uh, seven myths and, uh, mistakes that you may be making and, uh, what you can actually do about it. And so, you know, uh, the first thing is, is I just want to set up the scenario of what it is to be an entrepreneur. So, and why I want to talk about this is because uh, maybe you're like me, you came from the corporate world, and maybe this is your first business. And if that's the case, it's just a very, it's a very different environment, uh, number one, to have a business online rather than offline, and it's very different to have a business than have a job. And while you think, I know, I know, that's ridiculous, why is she talking about this? But having a business, you know, I, I personally, I've, I've worked in the corporate world, you know, for 25 years as a shopping center and retail marketing director. So all I knew was to get a paycheck. And when I started my own business, you know, I, I was coming from being a freelancer. And, uh, but I've always had friends who were quite successful entrepreneurs. Um, in fact, uh, two of them are very well known. And, uh, and as a shopping center marketing director, I've worked with hundreds, hundreds of stores, international, national, local, and just in the shopping center industry, every month I would have these, uh, board meetings with our, uh, with our merchants. And do you know what the number one thing they said every single month, every single month, every single month we would sit there in a meeting and they would say, um, we're not making money. There's no customers in the mall. I, I, why, you know, how can we get more people here? Well, I know that wasn't true because I was looking at their numbers. I saw the increases year after year, month after month. But every month it was the same thing. Oh, there are no customers. It's like empty. It was just the, every month. And so, you know, we called them the complaining merchants. <laughs> But so, so they had retail stores, and again, some of them were you know, national, international, well-known, large-scale retailers. And then, you know, uh, now I have um, these quite successful entrepreneur friends. You know, these are like multimillionaire people. Um, you know, one of them is my, my hair colorist. He, uh, you know, he does hair for Jennifer Aniston. Do you know what their number one thing is that they say? Oh, business is slow. I, I don't have clients. You know, oh, I need to work all the time because, you know, we need to drum up business. So what I'm trying to say is that having a business, uh, that's just, you know, the way that, um, that, that people's brains think. You know, as an entrepreneur, it's now your job to, um, to help people and to make money and to make sure things run smoothly. And, you know, quite frankly, the more you make, the larger your business is and the more you're going to spend on running your business. So it's an evolving circle. You know, it doesn't like send, someday you just, you know, sit back and go, oh, you know, I'm never going to work again. You know, if, you, if you're doing, uh, if your business is positioned correctly and you love what you do, you're probably going to be working more because you love it so much. And, you know, I, I know for me, uh, there's very little separation between uh, my life and my working life, not because I feel like I have to work all the time, but just it's, what, it's who I am. I, I do it in my sleep, literally. And so uh, being an entrepreneur, getting clients, 
that is just an ongoing thing. So I just want to train your brain so that, you know, uh, money is, um, is, is part of the whole circle of being an entrepreneur. And if you're not loving what you're doing, then you should be exploring, you know, uh, what it is that you would love that you do. This is why I have my business. I help people uncover their purpose and build their business based on that. Because that is uh, what's going in your, through your head all the time anyway. Even if you don't know what your purpose is, in actuality, uh, you know, your subconscious knows. But I digress. So I'm going to go through seven things. Some of them you're, you're, you're probably going to be like going, yeah, yeah, I know. But I want to address these things. You know, these are are myths and mistakes that you're making about making money. So number one is um, you don't have a program or you're not selling something that will make you the amount of money that you want to make. Like if you have a $20 item and you think that your goal is to make $10,000 a year, a month, um, how are, how many of those do you actually need to sell in order to make $10,000 a month? Like, I think that many people don't actually do the math behind uh, or between what their goal is and how many things they actually need to sell every week. And then break it down to, okay, well, that means that I have to sell one thing a day or 10 things a day. I'm going to get into the activities that you need to do later also. But I'd like to suggest that you do... See, Stephen, you're not aligning a $50,000 a month if you're... Yeah, totally. Like, you need to set realistic goals of um, what you expect and what you actually uh, are selling. And what's realistic. So I think the word realistic is, um, is misinterpreted when you go online. Because, you know, people... There are some people who have made a lot of money in a very short amount of time. But if you really go back and look at how they did it and who they were before they actually did it, how many people they had uh, uh, as their audience, regardless if they were making money or not, like, first of all, you're not them. Second of all, um, you didn't see the behind the scenes of what, what went on there. And third of all, you're not them. So... What's realistic? What's realistic for you uh, that you need to sell and that you can sell in order to make the goal amount? So I have a, a, um, a program. It's called Master Your Money Code. And one of the days that I actually teach people, I, I, I teach people what I call your magic number. And that magic number is not like, I want to make $100,000 in a year. Actually, your magic number is the amount of money that you need to make every month plus a very slight cushion. Because what ends up happening, and this is especially true for purpose-driven entrepreneurs, is that when you set your vision way out of proportion and suddenly the conversation in your head is, uh, oh, I'm not making money. Oh my God, I'm never going to reach my goal. When in actuality, you may have, even, you may have already, already reached it and you're, um, or, or you're, you're doing things to reach like this really, really, really high goal, when in actuality there are a few simple things that you could do to actually reach a, your magic number. And what ends up happening is that you freak yourself out by thinking and pressuring yourself that you have to make this huge, giant amount. And so I teach people this magic number so that you can become realistic about the amount of money you actually do need to make. And then you can unload the stress about money. You know, everybody has a money story. And uh, when you start to understand uh, the real truth behind um, how much you actually need to make, you'll find it to be way simpler. And, and you'll find that the ideas that come to your head as far as like making that money uh, start to come, you get a lot of clarity. This is about not comparing yourself to other people's successes, not trying to make what other people are making, and not trying to uh, uh, become uh, or adopt other people's success goals as yours. $10,000 a month, you know, that's like some arbitrary number, and that's great to have as like a goal, but do you need to make $10,000 a month? 
because I'd like to take the pressure off of you and you really calculate how much you need to make a month and work towards that. You know, I always uh, teach people to focus on, hi Chi Chi, to focus on your next client. This means uh, not you're just going to get one client, but this means that in order to get clients and make money, you actually need to have one person, not 10,000, not 100, not even 10. In order to get a client, you need one person to be motivated to pull out their wallet and trust you enough to pay you. So if, if you are not getting clients, I would like to suggest that you uh, understand your magic number, the real math behind your budget, and then focus on one client. And that be your goal for this next week. So, <laughs> that's so great, Chi Chi. Okay, so uh, number two, um, you, are you selling what you do and uh, not what you actually do? This is a very, you know, I often meet people, and this often happens to people who are in the health profession. I think nutrition school teaches you this, that, you know, you, you go online and you say, I'm a health coach. You know, I can solve any problem. I, I do, you know, I, I, can, I can solve your stomach ache to your flu to, you know, your hurt foot. And then you, and you think people are going to notice you. But there's a million people out there. And they all are doing the exact same thing. And so rather than just selling your profession, I suggest that you niche down and that you really understand what it is that you do. I call this your thing behind the thing. When you understand your thing behind your thing, which is really what, you know, what your purpose is, what challenges did you overcome? Because, and that's why you have a business. Because you know uh, how to fix those challenges because you overcame them, then base your business on that. Decide what you want to be known for and then claim it. Because once you decide what you're going to be known for, then you have one message. And I bet you could stand on a mount mountaintop or a rooftop and scream that message out loud. What most people do is, you know, I'm a health coach, I'm a business coach. And, and you have nothing to scream out loud. And so sometimes confidence eats away at you. You get absorbed in other people's successes. And then you go online and you don't have a voice. The truth is, when you have and you know your purpose, nothing could keep that voice inside of you. Because in fact, you get so passionate about speaking that purpose that that becomes your truth. And uh, you almost like want to bulldoze people because the truth is, look at me. I'm, I'm a totally introverted person. I live alone. I have a dog. I have a health condition that keeps me alone much of the time. So I really want to speak, but you couldn't tie me down to not tell my message every day because I have a purpose. I want to help people. And when you know that you'll be able to speak it. So niche down. You know, that, that when you niche down, then you can focus and see suddenly, you know, it's our reticular activating system. Suddenly you can see who you can help. You'll meet people and you'll be like, I can help her. Not, I can help everybody. Focus. Decide tonight what you want to be known for. And then write it in this post or come to my group or announce it online. Scream it to, at the, mount, um, to the mountaintops. Okay, so number three, um, okay, so I, I did a whole video on visibility. This is not about being visible, but this is about uh, telling people that you have a business, showing up like you have a business, uh, being a business owner. So we are online business owners. That means that at five o'clock, you don't like, clock in and clock out and then, you know, woohoo, I had pizza for dinner and, you know, I'm going on. You're a business owner uh, and you want to represent yourself as a business owner. I don't mean edit your message, but be a business owner. Like, um, 
when you are online, understand that uh, who you are and how you show up is how people are going to think you are and how you show up. And so uh, you are making an impact as your personal brand, whether you think you are or not. The first impression we make is not the one that we choose to make. It's the first impression that people have when they see us. So, you know, when you walk outside, you go into a coffee shop, you don't decide, uh, oh, those people are going to see me and those people aren't. And just like that, when you go online, you don't decide. And so, uh, you know, oh, I'm not using my Facebook personal page for business. Well, indeed you are. If you are in a Facebook group, you are using your personal page for business. And so, you know, how do you show up? And so, you know, this is about being so passionate about your business that you talk about it. You talk about it. You can brag about it. You can talk about, you know, how a client said something really great about you. You can talk about amazing discovery that you made about, um, you know, about a program that you just created. You can talk about you're excited to do a webinar, um, you know, and invite people to it. In fact, I recommend that you start networking. Facebook makes an ad friend button for a reason. And that means that if you love what you do and you love helping the people that you're meant to help, you need to, and I recommend, that you surround yourself with people who get you. This means other business owners, because I don't know about you, but my non-entrepreneur friends don't get me anymore. Because <laughs> I'm sitting there talking about, you know, your highest truth and, you know, how inspired I am. And, you know, that's just not a normal conversation. And so I like being surrounded by my entrepreneur friends because we all think alike. You get me. And if you don't, then you probably shouldn't be listening to this video. So, you know, network. And then when you speak out loud and you, and you, you talk about, you brag boldly is what I like to say, just about who you are, who you are as a person, what you've done that day, then, you know, people start to get that you have a business. You can't uh, focus on being visible because focusing on being visible is kind of stupid. Because your job is not to focus on being visible, it's to, um, to get your business out there and then focus on your business so that, and this is the next thing, are you ABIing? ABI, something you should write this on your computer. It's always be inviting. What sort of thing are you inviting people to so they can come and learn about you? You should always be inviting people to something. This means not focusing on being visible on Facebook. This is about creating something genius, like a webinar, you know, a teleclass, um, you know, a Facebook Live, ABI. I invite you to come listen to me in Facebook Live. I invite you to come join my group. I invite you to read my latest blog post. I invite you to my webinar. I invite you to my position to sell webinar teleclass um, on Thursday. I invite you to take my seven day position to sell challenge. <laughs> invite people to things because if you don't, so, you know, this is something that is just of human nature. We put something out there. So you put your website out there and you think people are going to come to it and they're not, it's not you. It's just that people are busy. And so you actively need to invite people to things. If you have a party at your home and you just say, I have a party and you're like, I'm so excited, you know, I hope people show up and you don't invite people to it. How do you expect them to even know that you have a party? You may be drinking alone. So we want to uh, invite people, be the, be the excitement. You know, this is something, uh, just a bonus tidbit. But occasionally we feel like momentum. Like I know you probably go through these cycles too, where, you know, sometimes it's like, oh my God, 
another day, really. And then the next day, it's like, woohoo, I'm all excited. When you catch that wind, it's kind of like when you're like uh, uh, running or doing anything. You catch a wind and you're like, oh my God, this is like getting really easy. When you catch a wind in your uh, business, like run with it. Like you actually, uh, energy is contagious. And every day, you know, I teach people active focus meditation. You get up and you, within an hour of getting up, you get out there and get motivated, focus on your success goals. When you can be the most exciting person in the room, yes, you, and that room is filled with you. When you can be that exciting person that you love, you are so obsessed with, um, with the things that you're doing that you don't even want to like follow other people because you're just so obsessed with what you're doing. You, you, you understand the people you can help. You know what you do and ideas are popping on the top of your head. That's called momentum. And that's the goal that you should have every single day. Not, you know, okay, I have to schedule my, uh, my, my Facebook and, and then uh, I have to like, you know, create this calendar for... No, you should be getting up and being like, who am I going to help today? My business is so fun. How can I make this more fun? This is something I'm just going to recommend. Sorry, I'm a little, going off a little on a tangent, but um, now I'm just on, <laughs> excited about this. I, you know, when I got the entrepreneurial flu and I, I fell into Facebook and it was just very, um, you know, it was, it was just a bad result. So I backed away for a while and I started a vlog on YouTube. You can find it at, at Shauna Yao. It's under my name. And I called it the Genius Diaries. And I would just, like, be talking um, on my phone to, you know, like, like I'm doing now. I would be talking about business, talking about life. I introduced you guys to Harlow. But I really, when I, what I did was I just, I uncovered my passions because I was listening to myself instead of listening to everyone on Facebook. So if you're lacking that excitement and passion and momentum, I recommend you start a vlog. You know, no one even has to see it. You can make it all private. But there's something really powerful that happens when you, when you speak. Um, you're genius. And, uh, and then you'll start to uh, discover what that genius is that other people who get you need to hear. But I digress. Okay, so we said ABI. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, this is, a, this is a big one. You're blaming something else. So this is going to sound really weird, but are you blaming because you don't have a big email list or that uh, it's because you don't have a sales funnel or that uh, there's too much competition? Because the reality is, is you in actuality don't need any of those things to make money and to get clients. In fact, you know, when I started my business, uh, I had like, when I started to get clients, I had like 20 people on my email list. Uh, you know, I, in fact, I don't know that I ever had anyone on my email, email list who um, became a client. Uh, I didn't focus on that. Uh, I did do, I think, like one teleclass, but I didn't really get clients from that either. Um, and I just focused on uh, being me. I had a program that was set up correctly. And I, I met people online. And then I slowly started to get a lot of referrals. And, you know, that's how my business ran. I really didn't, like, uh, and, and, and I was making five figures. So I saw people, like, struggling and, you know, trying to build, you know, joining these challenges. Build your email list, you know, in 30 days. And uh, what I realized is that's like having a money block. It's like creating the situation that may or may not actually be related to, uh, to what it is that your end goal is. So like when people talk about money blocks uh, and, they, and then they're like, you know, start picking up quarters on the ground and, you know, uh, you know, trying to sell your bike and do all these things so that you can start money coming in. Well, if you do that, how are you going to promote your business? 
<laughs> and just the same, if you're sitting there focused on building your email list, how are you going to get a client? I, you know, call me uh, lazy, but I'd like to say I'm strategic. I like to go to the fast path so that that momentum, momentum can start, you know, while I'm actually getting results. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to be like me or think like me, but that's just an idea uh, that, you know, instead of doing all these other things, understand where your fast path is and build the momentum from your results, not on, you know, some miscellaneous thing that somebody once said, so you can scale your business. Are you at the point where you should be scaling or are you at the point where you just should be earning and understanding your money earning system? I often talk about this, but everything's like a system. It needs to like work like a machine. Uh, let's see. So I want to make sure that I got this out all together. I don't know how many that I've done. Uh, let's see. So the last one that I'm going to talk about is that um, you are not, uh, you're not confident in yourself and in your voice. And because of it, uh, all these other six things have happened. And so when you show up uh, online, you are, you may be following other people, you are feeling in lack, and you're actually not noticing that you have paying clients now. No, they may not be resulting in your bank account now, but I've said, you know, you have two types of clients and they pay you in two different ways. One pays you with attention and, uh, and appreciation and the other uh, pays you with money. So in a system that works right, those people that are paying you with attention, some of them, not all of them, should be ones that you're converting into paying clients because those are people that you serve. Those are people that are actually now paying you, but you're, you may not be serving them. And you're like, no, I'm teaching free. I'm doing all this free stuff. Is that, you know, that, that does help them. But if you aren't offering them something deeper to take it a step further so that you can really help them, if you really know the solution to them finding their, their truth, then it's your job to offer it to them and charge money for it. We will do more for something that we pay for because it holds us accountable. That's just human truth. So it's not that you're being sleazy. It's not you're trying to, you know, suck money out of people. First of all, you have a business. Your job is to make money. And as, as a a business owner, your job is to charge people. If you don't want to charge people, you just want to give things away for free, then you have a hobby. Then don't decide that you're a business owner. That's just a hard truth. Then you need to uh, decide how you're going to make money. Are you going to make money by building an email list, having a sales funnel and doing all the things? Because if that's what you decide, so that's fine. If that's what you decide makes you money, then you will probably be sitting there trying to learn about that, paying people to set things up for you and doing all those things, and you may or may not make money. But that's a decision. Because just like what I told you, when I started my business, I decided that an email list didn't matter to me and that I was going to make money by talking to people. Is that the most effective way? No, but you need to find your most effective way. Because for me, you know, it made me a lot of money, in fact. But you're not me, so I'm not trying to put my system on you. And is an email list valuable? Yes, an email list is valuable. Doing the things other people are teaching are valuable. But they may not be the number one thing you need to do. And, uh, and, and they may, in the end, not be valuable to you. So you really need to just make that decision and make that decision right. Uh, so understanding all the things that I've, I've taught you today, 
then you need to um, stand in your truth and speak your mind. Have the courage just to get over that hump. Because I guarantee you, if your business is positioned right, if you are speaking your truth, like I said, nothing can hold you down. Once you get over that hump of like the thought of speaking, the thought of selling somebody, the thought of like um, saying that you charge money, it's way worse to think it than it is to actually do it. So, you know, confidence is an action. It's, it's an action. And what it really is, it's not focusing on the action. It's focusing on the first impression we make is on ourselves. And like I said, when you become the most fascinating person in your room, you become the most fascinating person of your personal brand to yourself, you're going to want to share it with everyone. You're going to want to get your message out there. You're going to want to help people and, ha and charge money for it because you've worked hard for it. So I hope that that's helped you really understand what it is to be an entrepreneur, uh, what may be going on and why you're not making the amount of money you want to make. And if you're interested, you know, I, I am having a teleclass. Uh, I may make it a webinar on Thursday, August 11th, which is this coming Thursday. And if you want to sign up, it's at positioned.totalgenius.net. And I highly encourage you to sign up for the, for the seven-day position to sell challenge. It's just on the other side of that link because that challenge is about um, really uncovering the inside of your positioning and then building it into the outside. So this is kind of going to be a jam-packed week. The seven-day challenge is ongoing. You can take it whenever. Uh, but if you're, if you're planning to attend the Position to Sell uh, webinar teleclass, I recommend that you take the seven-day challenge so that you can really understand uh, your inside positioning because I think that really, quite honestly, is uh, the most important thing. And I recommend that you uh, participate in the group so I can help you because when I help people, that's when they have the insights and uh, otherwise you kind of get stuck in the same pattern. So anyway, I hope that that's uh, helped you today. You know, feel free to join me at the Genius Collective on Facebook. And uh, have a great week, everyone. I look forward to seeing some of you at my teleclass on Thursday. Bye-bye. Have a great one.